In this video, I'll be making a chemical compound called sodium silicate. Silicates have a pretty cool history, and different complexes of silicates have been traced back as far as ancient Egypt. Sodium silicate, also known as water glass, which is made up of varying proportions of sodium oxide and silicon dioxide. It was first mass-produced around the 1800s during the Industrial Revolution. Industries such as detergents, paper, water purification, and making water-resistant materials. Depending on the ratio of sodium and silica within the solution, the sodium silicate can be used for different applications. I personally will be using sodium silicate to work on making water-resistant materials. Making sodium silicate is a really quick and easy project, but it does pose some sort of dangers. Let's just get started. The first thing we need to do is get our source of silica. I will be using some small drying packets that they put inside of moisture sensitive packages. These little packs contain around 2 grams of silica gel a piece and getting 100 packs is only about $8. I only need about 12 grams so I take out 6 packs and start crushing the silica gel beads inside. As I crush the beads you will notice a fair amount of silica dust coming off and it would be really careful not to breathe this in. Breathing in too much of this dust can cause silicosis, so it is always recommended to take personal protection as seriously as possible. I'm wearing a full face mask that is made for working with small dust particles. When I am finished crushing up all the silica beads, I empty them all into a small weighing bowl. The next part of the project is where things get kind of dangerous. I make an 18 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide can cause severe burns and damage to any skin it comes into contact with. Getting drops of this strength of sodium hydroxide will instantly start turning tissues into soap through a process called soponification. To make this, I add about 15 grams of sodium hydroxide into 20 milliliters of distilled water. This addition must be done cautiously, and the reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the water is extremely exothermic and creates a lot of heat. When I was done adding the 15 grams, my solution was just around 65C, or 148 degrees. Getting everything to dissolve took a few minutes of stirring. The solution became very cloudy upon addition, and it'll start to clear up when all of the sodium hydroxide has been dissolved. If you are having trouble getting everything to dissolve, add about 10 milliliters of distilled water and keep stirring. Repeat this process until everything clears up. After about 10 more minutes, my solution was crystal clear, and now I can finish my sodium silicate solution. We will slowly add the crushed up silica gel from earlier. The goal here will be to get everything to dissolve, but there is a caveat. If the beads aren't crushed up enough, they take a lot longer to dissolve. Also, getting the silica to dissolve, it's recommended that the solution is near boiling. As sodium silicate is made, the boiling point of the solution will slowly increase to about 120 C. At this temperature, any spills would be extremely hard to clean up, so caution is advised. Over and over, we'll add scoops of our silica gel, followed by heating up the solution until it starts to clear up. Once all of the silica has been reacted into the sodium hydroxide, the solution will turn from cloudy to crystal clear. This part of the process took just under 2 hours to add all of my 12 grams of silica. Once the final addition of silica had been added, we wait for everything to clear up, followed by letting the solution cool to room temperature. From here, we have a solution of sodium silicate. I could dry it down in an oven or let it sit for about a month, but instead I'm going to show an additional amazing project that can be done with sodium silicate. We can add a variety of water-soluble metal salts and watch a really cool chemical garden start to grow. I decided to use copper 2 sulfate and I threw a few clean pieces in and waited. When I came back the next day, the pieces of copper sulfate began to turn black and a really neat blue spike started to come from each of them. What is happening here is when a piece of metal salt is dropped in the solution of sodium silicate, a membrane of insoluble metal silicate is formed. Due to the osmotic pressure, water enters the membrane and breaks it, generating more insoluble membranes. This cycle repeats and the salt grows into all kinds of interesting forms. Different metal salts react differently and some people have even made some really cool art through this process. Anyway, that's all I have to say about sodium silicate, for now at least. 
I will be using it in the future project to create a water and fire resistant material, but that will be for another video. I want to take a moment to thank all of my Patreons for helping make all of these videos possible. I will always make these videos because I love to, but it is really nice to see all of the work that is supported by these amazing groups of individuals. I am working on some really cool videos for the future that range in all forms of subjects. For now though, have a great rest of your day.